This is Howard the Mechanic, give you another homestead update out here in a creek. This particular update and uh, review is going to be on a Echo CS400 chainsaw. Uh, I've owned two of them. Uh, one of them is about the original one I purchased. You can see in pieces over here, I purchased probably about two years ago. If I had to give an estimate, it as hell, it lasts three, four hundred hours. I mean, I literally cut a forest down with this fucking thing, you know, with very little issues. Uh, so that's what this review is going to be about. I own two of these. Uh, so I'm somewhat familiar with them. Uh, this would be the newer one, uh, CS400. They did change a couple things uh, in the six month window, I guess, uh, when I purchased them. First one did come with a metal bar. Feels good, it's a strong metal bar on it. Uh, the newer ones you're gonna buy, the one I bought six months later after purchasing the first one, has a plastic handle. It is a nice plastic handle, um, but it's plastic, man. It doesn't feel as good. I can tell you, I own two of the exact same models. The metal handle definitely is more firm. Cut feels better. Uh, if you get it jammed up, it is better with the plastic, uh, the metal handle, obviously. obviously. The metal handle, you can control the fucking machine better. Uh, a couple things I like and don't dislike, I'm gonna go over with you. Uh, First thing I like about this chainsaw is I've never taken a carburetor apart on either one of these. Both these, uh, one was probably two and a half years old, the other one's two years old. Purchased to use like a, a commercial piece of equipment. Uh, got a good price on them, roughly 300 bucks, something like that. Uh, I think I got them at Home Depot. Uh, parts are in stock for them. One thing I'll say about the CS400, just to give you a heads up, is it is hard to find the right fucking chain for it. Whenever you're at Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, you flip through the book, trying to figure out what chain number, the S62, whatever the fuck they tell you, it ain't the right chain. I did have a problem with that where I had to actually originally take the original chain up there and get the part number for that chain. Um, so that's some weird shit I've never been into. You are not getting the right chain by application for this thing. Other than maybe you work from Echo, maybe you might get the right chain. So there is some kind of odd problem with the chainsaw as far as the cataloging of it and the parts, to parts world. Uh, as far as getting the right chain for it, uh, so that's a problem I've had to ha I've had with it. Uh, you know, I have to remember what number part number the fucking chain is for, it so I can get the right chain. They don't keep Echo chains in stock at most places. I'll be honest with you, you have to buy an Oregon or a Power Care where that cheap shit is. Uh, one thing I liked about this chainsaw is the best chainsaw I've ever owned. It's probably the tenth, fifteenth, I don't know, forty years old, folks. They're not damn woods. Okay, this damn chainsaw is the best chainsaw I've ever owned as far as starting it. Starts right up. Uh, you pump the bubble three or four times. The bubble's easy to get to. You pump three or four times. It has a very easy on and off metal toggle switch that I like. Uh, it's just on or off. There is nothing in the middle. Okay. Never had to replace the toggle switch, ironically. It's easy to replace. You can replace it five minutes. You can go get one on a Sunday at noon if you had to. Uh, it's just a regular metal toggle switch. You can go get it any, anywhere in the world. Even if it's not the exact same one, you can make it work because it's a toggle switch. Uh, did like that about it. Uh, one thing I didn't like about it, and the problems that I've had, the reason this one is in pieces like this, my, my original one, that, I mean, I'm not exaggerating, this thing's a warrior, you know, I'm not exaggerating, I don't like the uh, chain setup of it, I don't like the clutch bar on it, the clutch bar is cheesy on it, it's loud, but it's not, it's just cheesy, it's, uh, it's easy to bump into, makes it kind of hard to get the cover off, I've had a problem where you have to kind of mess with the, you have to kind of get this lined up to actually put the chain bar cover back on, this, both these chainsaws from right out of the right out of the box, it's hard to keep the chain tight. And I have no idea why. It's two bolts on it. Uh, both the chainsaws had the same problem where the chain gets slack in it quick, and I mean quick. Um, but I, like, I, like most mechanics, take everything I fucking own apart, and I've had these apart. One of the weird things is one of the few pieces of equipment I've ever owned. I've never had the carburetor off either one of these. They both have been run on uh, fuel out of a gas can. I go ahead and uh, spin an arm and leg and get the the, the, the premix fuel for them. I have. I don't care anybody else tells you. Both these machines, I could do it a perfect example for them, is they do last longer, they do run better running on straight, don't, and as tempting as it is, you can do nothing else. You run these things on a, uh, on the correct fuel, you don't have any issues. There's no water in it, there's no ethanol in it, there's nothing else. Never had the carburetor off either one of these. This one has low compression, it does still run, I have the idle turned up on it. Uh, I ended up having to steal some parts off this one to get the other, the newer one running. And some of the reason is, one of the problems I did have, like going back to it, is uh, uh, is keeping the chain tight. You are not keeping the fucking chain tight on this, and I don't know why. I uh, do have aftermarket bars on them. Maybe that's some of it. You know, um, I've changed the nuts on them. One of them I've actually changed the nuts on, trying to get some better lock nuts on them, thinking. But uh, at the end of the day, um, you're going to be messing with the chain uh, adjustment on it. And uh, it has two nuts. They're kind of hard to get to. I have on both these chainsaws, uh, the actual chain adjustment that you stick the flathead screwdriver in to tighten is made of plastic. The actual bolt in there that you're turning is actually metal, but the actual housing it sits in and the plastic housing is plastic. It's a plastic nut, basically. I had to replace both those. They weren't expensive. They didn't have them in stock as a pain in the ass. Um, and I think that's the reason I bought the second one. It happened the first one, and I just was in a situation where I needed it on Sunday or whatever. I went and, buy it. and even having that problem, I went and bought the exact same model. Of course, this one, uh, like I said, has a plastic handle on it compared to the one I bought six months before that. But I was that satisfied with the first one because I can start it. 
there is no issue with starting a fucking thing. You can start the thing, cold, hot, doesn't matter, the damn thing, pump a couple times it starts. There's no directions on how to start it, it's just common sense. You pump the bubble three or four times, start it, don't flood it, start it a couple, it, it's just that, it's just that easy. There's nothing, there's no rock science to it. One of the few pieces of machinery I've ever owned, especially on these small engine lines, two strokes on these chainsaws, where there's no weird directions to start it, okay? It's all sweet, pump the fucking bubble a couple times, you pull the string on it. Don't like the string on it. This one has a had a broke string on it. I think both strings are replaced. They have a real cheesy string. Don't like the handle on it. The handles are pretty much a two finger handle. It's kind of a pain. You know, you don't have to crank it very much to get started. The gear ratio is a little bit off on it, and the handle's small on it. You know, the actual length of the string on it is small. I don't like that. Uh, some of the other things I don't like about it is I don't like the fuel lids on it, the oil or the gas. Uh, you're going to be using a flathead screwdriver. Just keep the tool with you. I do anyways. I keep the uh, I keep the tool with me. I, you're going to have to with this model because you're constantly fucking with the chain. Anytime you want to open the gas or the oil, you're going to be using this to get it open. I'm just going to let you know right now. Okay, I've had to replace uh, on both the models. I've had to replace one or the other. I've had to replace the lids on them because uh, you can't really, you don't, when you do use it, tighten it by hand, it doesn't feel tight. And I find myself, obviously, I'm up in the middle of fucking nowhere with no water doing chainsawing. I don't need any sparks out there. I don't need any gas leaking out of the thing. So I end up finding myself using a flathead to make sure it's snug. And, and it's just a shitty cap. Do have a cap in stock at Home Depot. I forgot what it was, five bucks, something like that. When I got some new chains, new blades, and all that shit, and they hit me in the head, and I got paid five bucks for the new lid. Uh, so I can keep the you know, $25 gallon of mixed gas I have uh, inside of it. Love the toggle switch on it, like I mentioned. Uh, air filter's really easy on it. I've never actually had the original air filters on them. Uh, it's gonna surprise you, they kind of have a cane install air filter on them. I have some pictures in here for you. Um, easy to work on. I have had the lid off this one. Uh, when I had the one problem that I've had with Echoes, the one serious problem, and that goes back to the tightening the chain, okay? The chain's so hard to keep tightening on this. Some of the reason is, is that the actual bolts that they use to keep the chainsaw blade tight to it are studded, meaning they don't have threads all the way. So you can get a situation to where, uh, maybe some situation I had, is to where uh, you can't actually suck the chain bar all the way up to it. And I actually broke one of these off one time. And uh, what happened is basically I broke the stud off. I mean, like you do a lug on a car, broke the stud off. Never had that problem before. Never had never had that happen to me. I went to echo.com, whatever the hell it was, found the studs, three bucks a piece, I ordered two of them. I said, come on, get them coming. Okay. Went ahead and started using the other one. I always run two chainsaws when I'm doing heavy clear. Downside is when I got the new stud, it's actually, you technically have to buy the whole fuel tank or oil tank housing because when you get the new uh, stud for it, um, and I took it all, took the whole damn thing apart. It was easy to take apart, by the way. I took the whole damn thing apart, 20 minutes, something like that, whole chainsaw apart. And when I got to actually replacing the stud in, I realized that that's actually part of the whole housing. The opposite side of this, where the stud is, is actually capped off with plastic. It's part of the oil tank, or the fuel tank, uh, it's oil tank. And so what happened is, I ended, up having to, I ended up just going to fix it, just being a redneck, I had to put the thing apart, and I knew the engine was still going on at the time. Um, so I ended up having to drill it out, uh, doing all kind of weird shit to get this new square stud back in here so I can put the chain bar on. After I did that, man, I used that thing. Uh, me and my son, we use these fucking things. We're, we're, we're cutting shit out of some stuff with it. So I did fix it. Uh, same thing happened to this one, my newer one, where the chain bar adjustment uh, stripped out because it's made out of shit plastic. Why didn't it spend two cents, put a metal nut in there instead of plastic? Couldn't tell you. Uh, that's what they did. They're eight bucks, something like that on eBay. I've got another one coming. Uh, so I had to seal the cover off this one for this one. Uh, this newer one that I have, same story. Never done anything to it, man. I <laughs> you know, I'm trying to think of, uh, I did put a bubble on one of them one time. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, I think it was this newer one. I had to put a bubble on it. The bubble got dry rotted or whatever. Uh, it was very simple to replace. I didn't have to take the curve off. Literally, I just took this nut off right here. Like, it took two seconds to take this nut off. And your flathead screwdriver came off. The bubble was easier to replace. It took two seconds. Okay, I didn't know if I could know where I was able to put a bubble on it. Stole it off something else temporarily. And I ended up going to buy a new one. Wasn't a special bubble. Went and got one Home Depot. Bolted on there. Everything's good. And one nice thing about having the same chainsaw, just being a mechanic, that you know. Uh, I like owning the same piece of equipment because when this one does finally die, I'll put this one in the barn. When this one, uh, whatever, some shit happens to this one, I go get a part off this one, put it on this, and I just keep going, man. I mean, uh, the carpenters never look bad on them. Uh, you know, this one I had ran overheated. When I say overheated, I literally was cutting some uh, cedar logs that were damn near two feet around, uh, 40 feet tall, and I cut a whole field full of them. And it just never let me down. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. I, I don't work Peco, by the way. No, I need sponsorships for them. They want to send me some free shit. Uh, I'll throw my information on it, send me some free shit. Uh, but 100% satisfied with the Echo. Uh, you know, it has its quirks, but of all the chainsaws I've ever owned, probably the Echo CS400 has been the best chainsaw. Uh, like I said, I own two, I'm going to go buy another one. You know, I, just, I like to keep two chainsaws running. Because, uh, you know, I live, I live in a rural area, and, you know, I can't go to Home Depot every time something fucking breaks. When I do have to go to Home Depot with these particular models, I haven't been able to get parts for them. Parts are pretty simple. Uh, like I said, I've only had to buy chains and a bubble for them. They have, this, and they have all this shit in stock, man. Again, they're not hard to start. They're easy to start. When you have gloves on, they're a little bit flimsy to start. Great balance to them. Uh, the balance was thrown off a little bit when I put the 18-inch from the 16-inch blade on it. This thing ran like a screaming animal. 
when I had the 16 inch, I just had to go up to the 18 inch because it's just 16 inches for my, my particular use. Cutting cedar wasn't enough. But even with the 18 inch bar, you get this damn thing rubbed up, has a high RPM. Uh, you can get it jammed up. Uh, I haven't had very many of them jammed up, so I'm just doing some weird shit with it. Uh, the, the RPM is so high on it that you can feel when it's bogging you down, especially with the metal handle. You can really have a good feel on the chainsaw, you know, when to pull back a little bit on it. Uh, so that's my review on it. Uh, if you got a comment, positive, negative, leave it at the bottom. If it's a negative, I'll ask. Hey, make the damn thing funny. Uh, talk some shit or something like that at the bottom of it. Uh, and, you know, hit the subscribe button. See what else I'm reading.